But Michael, did you hear any stories or rumors about survivors straying away from the wreck and then not being accounted for? Any rumors? No, I didn't hear anything. You see anybody that night? See anyone? Well, what do you mean? Well, stranger uh, wandering around. I, <laughs> I know this all sounds peculiar, but these are the kind of questions I'm going to be asking when I'm doing my investigation. Excuse me. Oh, certainly. Hello. Oh, Miss Emily, is that man there? Molly? Is that man there, the district attorney? Oh, yes, he's still here. Oh, for the love of heaven, don't let him see Kirk. Don't let him see him, whatever you do. Get rid of him. What? Don't let him see your husband. Do you hear me? You regret it for the rest of your life if you do. Molly, I don't understand. Kirk is in danger, in terrible danger, and so are you. But he's, he's coming home right now. He, he's just getting off the bus. He's on the way up the drive. Well, then stop him now. Excuse me. Now, I, I have a surprise, and no, no, it's what not are you talking ready about? yet. No, you'll ruin it, honey. Please, w just take a walk around the block, okay? In 15 minutes? Uh, Emily, I only have an hour for lunch. Now, no, come on. come on. Then 10 minutes. Please, honey, it's worth it. All right, I'll be back. Thanks. Well, what was all that about? Why'd you send your husband away? stunt from the beginning? No, you just don't understand. Well, maybe I do. Why would you be afraid of me meeting him unless he was wanted someplace? Is that it? No, that is not true. And you can ask Detective Saxon about that. Well, I can't really because she didn't have a chance to do a deep computer scan. She just checked the local records. Now, granted, we've got him on a few minor offenses for about 10 years ago, but he sure could have been busy someplace else since then, say another state. That is not the reason. Then you tell me what the reason is. It's because of his illness. His illness? Yes. I was afraid of what might happen to him if he saw someone like you in his own home. Someone like me? Yes. Kirk is afraid that he might have done something in his past. Now, I, I know that there is no reason for him to worry. But when someone has no memory at all of his past and the only thing he can remember is that he did wrong things when he was younger. Well, it's very natural for them to be frightened. You do understand that, don't you? Well, I suppose I can try, but what about that phone call? Who was that? It was my friend. A friend? Did she tell you to warn him off? Yes, uh, I mean, no. Uh, she, she just reminded me of how sensitive Kirk is and how any little thing could set him into a deep state of depression. Mr. Swift, please try and understand. Kirk is finally coming around to himself. He has a job now in a factory. You can check that out for yourself. Thanks, I will. We're only trying to be happy. And you come in here and you try to spoil it all for us. Please, sir, if it has anything to do with April... The uh, just a second. I'm not trying to spoil anybody's happiness, and for God's sake, don't think this is April's idea. I mean, I didn't come here to... I didn't come here... Well, this is turning out all wrong. It's not what I wanted to happen at all. Does that mean that you're not going to do anything to Kirk? <laughs> We're not wanting to meet me. It's hardly a crime. If it were, the jails would be overflowing. I am really... 
really sorry that I carried on like that. Why? It's obvious that you care about him a great deal. I do. I love him very much. I love him more than anything else in the world. Wonderful thing. I love somebody like that. I uh, uh, won't bother you anymore. Thanks for seeing me. Thank you for the coffee. Goodbye, Mrs. Michaels. gentlemen you would help me with this i was gentleman enough to supply the champagne and i still don't know why because it's for a celebration uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you see something wonderful happened i made a deal this morning and it is going to bring me millions mommy's millions i take it yes shall we toast to mommy i'll drink to that oh wait a minute actually i have a better toast to chivalry Oh. You see, there are still knights in shining armor out there, ready to help their lady fair. I take it you're not referring to me. Huh? Definitely not, you cad. This is to my husband, Logan Swift. Why the sudden fondness for Logan? Ah, oh, because this morning he promised me that he will not call April on the stand at the custody trial. Because of chivalry? Yes. Well, actually, it's a little more complicated than that. Um... To tell the truth, it's a miracle. You see, at this train wreck, there was a big mix-up of the bodies, and they didn't really bury Draper Scott's body in his own grave. What are you telling me? Are you serious? Yes, isn't it incredible? It's the truth. They, they checked his dental records or something, and that's how they find out, and they think that he might still be alive. Good <laughs> Lord. Does April know about this? No, that's the whole thing. Nobody wants to tell her, especially Logan. They're afraid she'll get her hopes up that Draper's still alive. But if he were alive, surely we would have heard something by now. No, no, no. They don't really think he's alive. They think he drowned or something. They're afraid that April will spend the rest of her life lighting candles in the window. I don't know. But the point is, I promised Logan that I wouldn't tell April, and he promised me that he wouldn't call her on the stand. Now, I think that that is a wonderful bargain. Cheers. You know, almost too good to be true. No, it's true. Logan will keep his word. And don't you look at me like that, because April had every right to know, and she also had every right to know that it was Logan who was keeping it from her. I see. I mean, she'll find out eventually, but not from me. My lips are sealed. And so is the bargain. So that's what you meant by chivalry? Mm-hmm. You see, Logan was afraid that the effect might be very bad on poor April sitting in her poor little penthouse... You know, when I think of that insipid little creature living in that beautiful apartment, it makes me sick. Because she's living better than you, right? Yes, but not for long. Soon I will come into my own. Tell me something, uh, Rayla. Mm -hmm. If this was supposed to be such a well-kept secret, how did you find out about it? Because I have friends. Cliff Nelson told me, and then I confirmed it with Derek Mallory. I, um, I talked to them on the telephone a couple of days ago. The hell you did. You probably wormed it out of both of them with your usual approach to men. It's not true. I, I didn't see them. <laughs> Elliot! Elliot, I didn't see them. You know I only see you. Come on, you know I only care about you. <laughs> This is really a great restaurant. I feel like it's my birthday or something. We just felt it would be a good opportunity for the three of us to have lunch, Kelly. Yes, it's very rare that our schedules coincide at this hour. Are you sure that's the only reason? Well, I mean, I don't mean to sound suspicious or anything, but I know you were a little bit upset when you talked to my parents on the phone in Rome. Upset is not quite the right word, Kelly. 
Dear, I'm sure you know why I wanted to talk to your dad privately. Because we haven't had much luck in getting any answers from you as to why you reached your decision. Kelly, we're being inquisitive because we feel responsible for you, and we'd like to know as much as possible about you. Well, I understand that, Uncle Mike. I mean, who doesn't like people who are concerned about others? Well, we are concerned about you. And we, we just want to be sure that your decision was based on something reasonable. Well, what did Dad say it was? He didn't say. He did tell us one thing, though. That you had gotten into some kind of trouble in Rome. And that we could find out the rest of the details if and when you want to tell us. Your father's quite a man, Kelly. I hope you realize that. Oh, I do. I mean, he's great, and so is Mom. They supported me 100% throughout the whole mess. Not once did they disbelieve a word I said. Well, if they were so supportive, then why did you leave? Well, I was blamed for something. Something pretty awful. What, some kind of crime? Oh, no, I, I wasn't arrested or anything like that. But it did involve the Italian police and the American embassy. It was a pretty big mess. But you were innocent, weren't you? Oh, I swear I was, Uncle Mike. Although, I guess it didn't look that way. Not to anyone. In fact, I'm, I'm even surprised my parents believe me, considering... The, Kelly, not too long ago, a very close friend of ours was accused of murder. It led to his arrest, his conviction, and eventually his death. But not once did any of his friends lose faith in his innocence. And that innocence was eventually proved. Too late, unfortunately, but it was proved. Now, maybe if you stuck it out in Rome, no, you could no, prove you... No, no, Uncle Mike, you don't understand. I was making them suffer. Well, the publicity hurt them very much. Well, as you know, Dad's an architect, and the construction company that he deals with is all tied in with the government and politics and all that kind of stuff. For all I know, if I'd stayed in Rome, he would have lost his job. Oh, well, I doubt that. Kelly, I do know that your dad is very unhappy with your decision, and so is your mother. But I made it, and I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Besides, I'm an American, and I want my puppets to be Americans, too. Yes, of course. Well, they already have a lot in common with a lot of Americans. They're unemployed. Hey, Mike. How are you? Oh, hello, Bobby. How are you? Uh, you haven't met my wife, have you? Nancy, this is Bobby Burroughs. Hello, Mr. Scar. Pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Bobby is the voice of Monticello. <laughs> what he means, Mrs. Scar, is I'm a DJ, disc jockey. I do the Boogie with Burroughs show. Oh, yes, yes. I've heard that a couple of times. Yes, it is the number one show in the city. <laughs> um, oh, I'd like you to meet my nephew. Hey, sure. I know all about your nephew. His name is Kelly McGrath, and he's a famous puppeteer. Am I right? Your husband handled my last lawsuit against the station, Mrs. Carr, and thanks to him, I came out of it smelling like roses. I see, I see. Well, now, how, how do you know Kelly? You know, we haven't met before, have we? Well, I have seen you on those promos for WMON once or twice, but that's not how I know. You see, you've got a terrific press agent named Ronnie Burroughs. Your son? That's right. A couple of weeks ago, the poor little guy had to go into Monticello General for an operation on his leg. Oh, I hope he's all right now. Oh, sure, sure, he's fine, but he doesn't even talk about the operation. All he talks about is a terrific puppeteer he saw named Kelly McGrath. Well, that's, that's really nice of you to say that, Mr. Burroughs. How many times have you been at the hospital, Kelly? Well, four or five times, I guess. You know, I did a show for the geriatric ward, and they like the poco puppets just as much as the kids do. <laughs> <laughs> He's really very talented. I'm finding it a little difficult to get started professionally, though. Well, you're not working, Kelly? Well, I have a job, all right, at the Unicorn Disco. Oh, well, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, but, but I tried to do a puppet show there, and uh, they said it just didn't fit in. Well, now, wait a minute. That night that you brought the puppets down, you, you attracted a tremendous crowd. Well, yeah, but... Then it was the novelty of the thing. You know, puppets in a disco. You know, that is a novelty. Say, I've got an idea. Maybe I can help. Hmm? What do you mean? 
you just tune into my show tonight around eight o'clock and you'll find out what I mean. Well, so long, folks. See you in court, Mike. <laughs> All right, Bobby. Bye. Police, wasn't it? No, not exactly. Well, what's that supposed to mean? It was the district attorney. The district attorney? That's worse. What did he have? An indictment? Well, why didn't he send the police? Oh, no, no, you don't understand. He's a friend of April's. He just wanted to meet you. I mean, he wanted to oh, meet us. No, no, come on, Emily. No, I can't, I can't believe it. There, there had to be something else. Had to be more to it. Yeah. He knows about your police record. I guess he just wanted to see if April had uh, sold her house to a criminal. Well, Emily, for Pete's sake, why didn't you have me, have me meet the man? I mean, sending me away like that, it just made me look worse, like I really was a fugitive or something. No, honey, I explained to him that, that, that you, you'd been ill. Well, you still shouldn't have done that. Well, I wouldn't have if it hadn't been for Molly. Molly, now what does Molly have to do with this? She called me just before you got off the bus, and she warned me that it would be dangerous for that man to meet you. It sounds like Molly. Honey, you shouldn't have listened to her. I wouldn't have, Kurt, but she was in a panic. She was in an absolute panic. Now, I tried to call her before, but nobody answered. Oh, Molly always assumes the worst. Come on, take it easy. You're shaking. It's all right. It was terrible. It was an awful experience. I just... I can't help wondering when April is going to think of me now. And she's been so kind to me. No, no, no it's, it's, it's going to be all right. She won't realize that it's just, just a little little mistake, that's all. No, but she, she won't trust me anymore. She's going to feel like I've been hiding something well, from her. Well, you are hiding something, Emily. Wait a minute. Let me let me think for a second. There's got to be a way that uh, you can you, you and I can handle this problem. But how? I can stop hiding. I can stop being such a recluse. I I can go see Mrs. Scott with you. Will you? Yeah, of course I will. All oh, this secrecy is making us look like Bonnie and Clyde, so all we have to do is be less secretive. Oh, honey. God, that would be so wonderful. It's the best way, honestly. It is the best way. All right, look, you just uh, call Mrs. Scott and make an appointment. I, I got to go back and see if I still have a job. But, Kirk, you haven't had lunch yet. Well, that's all right. I'll uh, have a big dinner. No, no, no. You stay right there. I'm going to fix your sandwich. Mrs. Scott for the afternoon off, and she's taking the baby to the park. Now you tell me what's going on. What was that phone call all about? Emily, uh, dear, would you mind sitting down? No, of course not. Well, that's why I came here, to tell you exactly what it was all about. Wait, now, before you start, I want to tell you that that man was not here to arrest Kirk. He said it had nothing to do with his police record. No, I, I suppose not. See, he was just a friend of April's, and, well, he said he was just doing her a favor. Yes, I... 
I suppose that's what he uh, wanted to do. Besides, it's not going to matter anymore, Molly. Kirk and I just talked it all out, and, well, he's decided to come out of hiding. He's going to come with me to April's now. Oh, oh, dear God. I... No, Molly, it really is for the best. We'll tell her everything, and I know that she'll understand. Miss Emily. Miss Emily, you have got to know the truth. You've got to know the truth before it strikes you in the face. What? There's just no way to stop the truth anymore, Miss Emily. No way to stop it at all. That's why I brought you this. Outside the edge of night. 